Hi guys, it's me, Bree, back to you with another bump date, finally. I'm 33 weeks, I'm actually almost 34, but I'm gonna do my 33 week bump date, and then hopefully um, I start getting better at doing these weekly. I'm like seven and a half months pregnant, which is unreal, and I'm so happy and excited that I've made it this far. Of course, Aiden and I are home because, you know, we're in a pandemic, so you're gonna hear the background noise. I'm sorry, there's nothing, there's nothing I can do about that. Let's talk about the plan if I deliver early or if my intended parents can't be here because I've been getting a lot of those questions lately, especially with my state getting, you know, somewhat closer to reopening. Um, you know, we're starting to talk about reopening and reopening in stages and what that looks like. And, um, you know, we, we might just be a few weeks away from, you know, starting to reopen things. Of course, I will always have to touch base with my intended parents. Um, like I said, I'm 33 weeks now. I haven't touched base with them about going back to work specifically since I was 28 weeks, but they, at that time, they weren't comfortable with it. They didn't want me to go back. And this was the very first week that the salon closed. So here we are over a month later and uh, the salon is still closed. You know, at first we said two weeks. And then, you know, quarantine was supposed to be over like April 30th. And now here we are um, in May. You know, we're just kind of playing it by ear. Um, I don't know when the salon is going to reopen, but my last day of work was going to be May 28th before I was going to go on my six week maternity leave. So, I mean, we're not looking at opening before May 22nd. So I, I don't want to give, you know, my clients who watch my videos, um, I don't want to, I don't want you to feel discouraged. I will be back in the salon, obviously. I just don't know when yet. I don't know for sure if that's going to be before my maternity leave or if that's going to be after my six week maternity leave, like originally planned. I, at this point, if the salon reopened, let's say around May 22nd, um, when people are kind of expecting my state to start opening up again, I'm not going to go back to work for a week and then be on my maternity leave. And like I said, um, the last time I touched base with my intended parents about working, they weren't comfortable with it anyway, which is totally understandable. So now that that's kind of out of the way, um, a lot of people have asked me what's going to happen if the travel ban isn't lifted. And what's gonna happen if I go into labor early, like I did with my son, I was almost two weeks early. Um, and you know, my intended parents can't be here. In the case that my intended parents can't be here for the birth, um, or like very shortly after, like hours after, then um, they have already designated somebody who will care for the baby while we're in the hospital. Um, because I'm not mom, so baby isn't gonna be with me, baby is gonna be in a different room and need someone to take care of him. So they have already designated somebody through um, an agency of some kind to look after the baby. And then there is a, uh, like a specialized nanny service who after the baby is discharged from the hospital will be responsible for the baby until my intended parents can get here. At the end of the day, no, I'm not going to be responsible for the baby. I am going to be pumping and supplying breast milk. I'm helping out in that way, but um, I definitely, you know, I, I wanted to be a surrogate and I love babies. I, I have a one and a half year old, almost two year old. I obviously have a lot of love for this baby as I'm carrying him, but I think it's a whole different thing to carry, labor, deliver, then have to care for that baby. Um, for you know who knows how long and then give him to his parents which I think that's a whole different kind of bonding relationship that I just don't think um, for a lot of reasons I would be the best person for I don't I don't think that would be great for 
you know, I don't deal with um, depression or anything like that, but I don't think that that would be great for my mental health. Um, and it would take an incredibly strong person. I, you know, everyone's different and everyone's surrogate intended parent relationship is different. I have heard of some people who, you know, this is their, what they call a sibling journey. They've already done surrogacy for the same set of parents once, and now they're doing it a second time for this family. And, um, they've developed a, a really close, strong relationship with them. And they would feel more comfortable taking care of the baby themselves as a surrogate than hiring a stranger. And that's totally fine. It, I think it just, it depends per person. Um, and nobody is wrong. It just comes down to what your comfortability is. And at the end of the day, Northwest Surrogacy Center, which is the agency that I'm working with, they actually recommend not doing it anyway. At the end of the day, um, baby will be taken care of and there's no need to worry. <laughs> but hopefully let's cross our fingers that the parents can be there um, because, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty detrimental to miss the birth of your child. Um, so hopefully they can be there, but we're rolling with it. So let's jump back a little bit and talk about the quarantine because I just kind of touched on that a little bit. If you haven't watched my Our Hairstylist Essential Workers video, that would be a really good one to watch and I'll link it in the description box below for you. My number one priority is the health and safety of myself, my family, so my husband and my, my toddler, and also the surrogate baby I'm carrying. And at the end of the day, it's not even just about my family unit and the baby. It's about my extended family. It's about my friends, my neighbors, my immediate community. I live in a really small town. It's, it's not even just our state, it's across our nation. And this is a worldwide pandemic. And at the end of the day, the purpose of the quarantine is to flatten the curve, stop the spread, and really most, you know, on a, the pretty important side, we also needed to allow our state time, our country time, to get the medical uh, resources that we need for when we start opening up, inevitably, numbers are going to spike. We're, you know, even, I, I agree that we need to open slowly and in stages um, so that we're not just like in large groups being crazy and a ton, like a mass amount of people are sick at once. But there have been centers developed with, you know, medical supplies and, there are resources that are available to, that are going to be available to us that in the beginning we didn't have. Um, and we just don't wanna be in a position where as a state, we have so many sick people and so little resources that we're having to choose who gets the medical help that they need to get better and who doesn't because uh, that's a pretty terrible position to be in. You know, without getting too political here, because I, I'm i not a super political person, um, I think that everyone's just doing the best that they can. You know, this isn't exactly something that has happened in history before. Um, people have talked about, you know, in history, we've always just quarantined the sick, not the healthy. So why are we all quarantined right now? But again, going back to stopping the spread, flattening the curve, and at the end of the day, making sure that we have the medical resources we need to provide people with, um, with, with supplies to get better and with medical care. So that's why we haven't had the coronavirus pandemic before. This is something new for us and we needed to prepare ourselves. So that's why we're all quarantined. And it's not supposed to be forever. It was never intended to be forever. So that, I, I get it. I get that it's so frustrating and a lot of people are feeling like their rights are being taken advantage of or being taken away. And I am not there. I think that the people 
who are in power making these decisions are doing the best that they can. And we haven't had to deal with this before. This is something that's going to be in history books. My personal feelings about the quarantine aside, at the end of the day, again, I think we're just doing the best that we can. And the numbers are showing that this is working. And yes, our immune systems are gonna be weakened. For sure they're gonna be weakened. Um, I don't I don't think that there's a perfect situation. I don't think there's a perfect case scenario one way or the other. We're just doing the best that we can. And I respect that everyone has their individual struggles within this, but we are all in this together to an extent. And I just wanna urge you guys to continue doing the best that we can and stay on course because things will reopen. Businesses will reopen. Our economy will eventually um get better or you know everything we'll we'll rebuild we will reopen i'm excited for when you know i can go over to my dad's house for dinner again and go jump in his pool but for now we are home doing nothing anyway let's move on let's talk symptoms i am still having a little bit of heartburn every now and then but it hasn't been bad lately this sounds so funny especially if you're like a family member watching but lightning crotch is a real thing and i remember it with aiden and it's it literally down there feels like lightning like literally it feels like lightning going on down there and um i don't, <laughs> don't know how else to tell you guys but yeah that's that's happening i am having braxton hicks contractions i had an appointment this week um just virtually my next one will be in person my intended parents did send me masks, so I have masks for when I have to go to appointments, which is what my OBGYN recommended me doing, is wearing masks even to my appointments. So I have a mask for my next appointment, which I think is 35 weeks. And then after that, my appointments go every week. I have been doing awesome at doing like creams and things. I never got stretch marks when I was pregnant with Aiden. But after I delivered, I had stretch marks when I was shrinking back down. And now in this pregnancy, I'm in a dress, so I'm not gonna lift up my dress and show you guys my belly, but I only am seeing like a little bit of those stretch marks under on the bottom of my belly and on my hips, on my sides, kind of come back a little bit. I had a friend give me um, a jar of something and I used all of it. And I had another friend give me a jar of something else. And so now that's what I'm using. And it's like full of collagen to help the elasticity of your skin and stretch marks. Um, and my surrogacy agency sent me some things. And so there's um, a belly oil, like a pump that I have also been using. So I have been really good about keeping my belly hydrated and moisturized. And hopefully um, stretch marks aren't a huge issue. To be honest, even the stretch marks that I had after having Aiden were never very dark and they didn't bother me. I didn't have many of them and I wasn't ashamed of them and I'm still not. I am definitely peeing more often. There was a couple of times this week where I was like, I, I seriously peed probably 10 or 15 minutes ago. Like, how is this possible that I have to pee again? And I'd go and pee and it was like, nothing i was like seriously i felt like i was gonna have like like a waterfall coming out and it's barely anything at all seriously that's been fun i am trying to keep myself busy so i have actually gotten into hand lettering i found somebody on instagram who sells a hand lettering book and kind of like a beginner's guide and so i started doing that and now i'm hand lettering and drawing flowers and things like that through my Procreate app on my iPad, and that's been a lot of fun. Um, I started doing little things like working on our um, front deck area. Uh, it's been very plain and we've just had like lawn chairs out there. And so I got some um, inexpensive chairs, a couple of chairs that were on sale from overstock.com. We've shopped with them before and I have been able to start kind of setting up an outdoor space with our umbrella and some like solar lights out there and just in time for our apartment to give us notice that our entire deck is being demoed and we're getting a new one. So in about like nine-ish days or so, uh, we have to uh, take everything 
off of our deck for about five days and they are going to be giving us a new deck, which will be really nice, but I was like, of course. I don't have my cervix check until I'm 39 weeks. Um, we'll see if I make it that far. I was 38 weeks and three days when I delivered Aiden, so um, a little less than two weeks, about a week and a half-ish before my actual due date. I had him August 5th and he, was, he wasn't due until the 16th. So um, we'll see if I make it to my cervix check. But the other thing, when I, when I was pregnant with Aiden, I was working full time up until like that last month, I started cutting back my hours a little bit. Um, but I was on my feet, I'm a hairstylist all day long. So um, I don't know if that had something to do with it. I've been home for about a month and a half. So I, uh, I don't know if he will also be early or if, I'll get closer to my due date. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, follow me guys on Instagram. That's the best way to stay connected with me all the time. I try to post to my story. I also just made a TikTok. Both my TikTok and my Instagram are at underscore Brie underscore V. That is the best way to stay connected with me a little more often than just when I post on my YouTube channel. But if you found value out of this video, if it was helpful, whether you're a surrogate or you're pregnant or you're just interested in, uh, you know, what's going to be happening <laughs> with labor and delivery and things like that. Um, when, uh, when that time comes during this pandemic, then keep on watching my videos and I will make sure that I always do my best to update you guys. Um, really quickly, I haven't, I didn't get another update from my doctor this last time that I talked to her this, this past week, um, over the phone about my hospital, but the time before I saw her, the hospital was still allowing one support person for labor and delivery. So cross our fingers. That's still the case. Um, but we will see how everything goes and I will see you next time. Bye guys.